नमस्ते माय नेम इज़ अमोक एंड वेलकम टू माय पॉडकास्ट बिफोर आई स्टार्ट टुडेज पॉडकास्ट आई लाइक टू मेक अ फ्यू अनाउंसमेंट्स रिगार्डिंग द पॉडकास्ट द फर्स्ट इज रिगार्डिंग द पेस ऑफ द पॉडकास्ट आई हैव डिसाइडेड दैट अल्टरनेट वीक्स आई एम गोइंग टू डू अ मोनोलॉग वन वीक एंड एन इंटरव्यू द अदर वीक द मोनोलॉग्स विल बी टिपिकली अबाउट सम प्रिंसिपल्स दैट आई वॉन्ट टू डिस्कस If I like a certain principle, I'll tell you why I like it, and if I don't like a certain principle, I'll tell you why I don't like it. And the interviews will be typically be on any subject that is doing the pop, uh, rounds of the popular parlance, and it will be with some people whom I find interesting. That's about the channel and its trajectory. Now the second announcement is regarding the channel itself. I don't plan to call this channel a Mox Podcast forever. but i have not arrived at a good enough name as of now something that appeals me i don't know why but this week hopefully i will decide upon a name and i've already spoken to a few people about the channel logo and my channel art so that will be something new to look forward to next week and the third announcement is regarding a q and a now anyone if any one of my listeners have any questions regarding any video that i've done until now please be sure to leave a comment on this video or tweet me at my twitter handle it will be mentioned in the description it is at amog underscore astra that is at a m o g h underscore a s t r a now those were all the announcements that i wanted to make now let's start with the podcast itself uh, i was as usual languishing on our favorite social media website no not tinder twitter and that is when i came across a tweet which read something like this i'll quote journalism in india is losing credibility not just because it refuses to hold those in power accountable but because it is constantly playing the both sides narrative to prove its neutrality and please people on all sides end quote this was tweeted out by none other than rana ayub a few days ago This was in the backdrop of the farmer protests of Delhi but this has pretty much been the chorus of the legacy left leaning media pretty much forever that they have now had enough of staying neutral when the overton window has so clearly shifted to the right senior journalist of NDTV Ravish Kumar who was named as the winner of the Ramon Magsaysay award last year at the award which was eventually overshadowed by the abrogation of article 370 claimed that journalists are working in an atmosphere of fear and neutral journalism is unlikely to survive as media is dependent on corporate finances in india in fact the award citation itself said i'll quote in a media environment threatened by an interventionist state toxic with jingoist partisan trolls and purveyors of fake news and where the competition for market ratings has put the premium on media personalities tabloidization and audience pandering sensationalism ravish has been most vocal on insisting that the professional values of sober balanced and fact based reporting be upheld in practice end quote now i started with these ex- these examples because they have something to do with the this concept called neutrality the definition of this neutrality is not taking sides or impartiality now this is not an entirely undesirable quality to have in a journalist consider the field of journalism for a minute it starts with a reporter in marathi a reporter is called a vartahar one who extracts or snatches the news from the source varta har and reports it to their editor or senior the reporter has to give an exact account of what happens on the ground in order for the news to be as close to the truth as possible for that neutrality is actually a pretty useful quality to possess consider there's a conflict between two parties neutrality ensures that a journalist does not favor one party over the other at least in their coverage this is important because the consumer of the news makes up their opinion based on whatever is reported in the media 
in order for there to be a balance in the society it is generally accepted that the truth be told in the news hence impartiality on the part of the reporter is essential this is especially important in communally sensitive areas where a misreported news could lead to violence now let us go up the media hierarchy news editors get their inputs from the ground and build upon the facts to embed it into a story this story is then published or presented on tv again impartiality or neutrality would mean that the editor should not take sides they must not favor one narrative over the other like opinion editorial writers again this is because they hold sway over the public opinion many tv anchors and editors present themselves as such neutral and unbiased presenters yet if we were to really see what they report one realizes that it is not really the case what some channels for example ndtv who consider themselves paragons of unbiased and pure journalism do is that they present a one sided view only calmly as opposed to say a republic tv which has all that flamboyance and sensationalism attached to it and this is somehow used to project as though ndtv is neutral in some sort of way that republic isn't since they are not trying to rile up people's passions there could be an entire series of podcasts where i could name incident after incident where this happens on both sides otherwise what is dar ka mahol hai if it is not an e- appeal to emotions it is the same thing but that's not the objective of this podcast what i'm getting at is this facade of neutrality that some people hold up and call it a virtue in my opinion neutrality is not really a virtue unto itself when one constantly ignores some side of the popular parlance on purpose one de facto has agreed to be partial the left leaning media fervently refuses to cover some issues in serious depth as does the non left media on some other issues i'm not saying only one side is responsible but this does happen and interestingly one of the reasons that i've seen being thrown around to justify uh, some of this bias is actually something very funny to me people have argued that the observer effect that in principle says that when you observe a system you change it is being played here now since the observer effect it actually says that when you observe a system you are cha- you are changing it therefore it is not possible to only observe a system and record it without simultaneously changing it now why this is funny to me is because this seems very profound but it is actually profoundly meaningless observer effect is an effect found in physics where it says pretty much the same thing actually that an observer has an impact on the system an observer by his or her mere act of observing changes the system so you never really get an exact reading consider the example of measuring air pressure in a tire when you try to measure the air pressure in a tire you actually cannot usually do so without letting out a little air from the tire therefore you are actually changing the pressure in the tire therefore the reading is not exact this is argued at least i found people arguing this therefore no reporting can be exact reporting or entirely true reporting but is a simple way to answer this and it is this that such instances of the observer effect are not very useful because usually the observer effect itself is negligible especially in cases like this if you really want to measure the air pressure in a tire that is useful then whatever little air that goes out of the tire when you are measuring it is negligible therefore you are not changing the system by much so broadly you are reporting whatever is observed however 
There are cases where this observer effect is extremely pronounced. Forgive me for keep keeping going about physics in this, but it's actually very interesting. Where this effect is extremely pronounced is in quantum physics. In quantum physics, there's something called a wave function and it entirely collapses if an observer is present there. So I could get into actually the specifics of this experiment and how it is different from say the uncertainty principle of Heisenberg. But again, this is not the focus of this podcast. What I'm trying to get at is in quantum physics, the effect is very significant. The effect of the observer bias. The takeaway from this is that the significant effect of the observer being present is only seen in the quantum realm, meaning infinitesimally small systems. Now, let me just relate this metaphor back to journalism. This would only mean that any significant effect of the observer effect would be observed at the level of the on-ground reporter, where the subject whom the person is, whom the reporter is taking an interview of, for example, would behave differently when they know that they are going to be interviewed. This observer effect is on that level, on the level of a ground reporter. It is not at the editorial level or the classical physics level relating back to the metaphor. So anyone giving this reason of the observer effect, uh, because you see some biased uh, journalism being done at the uh, TV news level or the editorial level, they're actually either lying through their teeth or they don't have a clue as to what they're talking about. Now, however, there is something called an observer bias, which is a cognitive bias, uh, which is in, involves a, a researcher or a reporter not detecting something owing to their preconception uh, conceptions and assumptions. But that is a different issue altogether. It's not something that people do uh, purposely. It's a, it's a cognitive bias, so they don't even realize that it's happening sometimes. Now, let me just clarify this, that I, for one, do not care at all about the bias of a reporter or a journalist. Yes, I do not care. All I care about is something else called objectivity or seeing a fact as a fact. If there is a fact in front of you, you consider it as such and report it. A bias, something like an observer effect, comes only into place when you try to attach your opinion to it. It is something very similar to the story of Ved Vyasa dictating the Mahabharata to Sri Ganesh without pausing to think lest it induce a bias. Something like that. Besides, there are some subjects that you cannot exactly be neutral or unbiased on. Something like terrorism or rape. You cannot expect people to hear both sides as though it were some sort of a virtue to afford rapists a chance to justify their heinous acts. Why would you do that? In matters of national security, one cannot afford to give voice to elements who are likely to use the platform to spread their demented ideologies. Mind you, I'm not saying that the media houses should be banned from covering that or anything. I'm not advocating for a ban. They, will, they should still be allowed to do that. It is just that it is not helpful to the large sec larger section of the society. And I do not blame any media house if they display such a bias against such individuals in some cases. Yet you do not give a platform to a terrorist or you do not give a platform to a rapist. I personally wouldn't hold that against a media house. If one follows objective reporting, then any bias that a person might attach with their opinions should not feature at all. A journalist is valuable primarily because they report news to you, not their opinions. Because you have opinions of your own. Everyone has an opinion about something. But very few people possess some facts that you may need to know. That's why journalists are valuable, at least primarily. If you think a journalist's opinions are not something that you agree with, you can always offset that by watching or reading what another journalist says or writes, and then make up your mind. 
that is the reason why i value objectivity over neutrality because i trust myself enough to make up my minds mind based on the facts of a case and not outsource my thinking to others if you like today's podcast be sure to leave a thumbs up if you have any comment positive or negative please be sure to use the comment section of the video for more such content please subscribe to my channel namaste